Uh, one central bank has been going in the opposite direction from its peers, cutting interest rates. Yeah, no, you heard me right. Not only has the Turkish central bank been cutting interest rates, the justification has been to tame inflation. Well, the Borsa Istanbul 100 index closed down more than 8%. Trading was halted twice. Mohamed El Arian joined me. Um, and we discussed whether or not Turkey could be heading for a full-scale economic crisis. So first, for Turkey, there are conditions under which cutting interest rates can promote a better economic outcome. But Turkey is not in that world. Right now, what Turkey is in the midst of is a self-inflicted currency crisis that today we started seeing what's called contagion, which means a bad thing happens here and it contaminates other things. So this is a currency crisis that if Turkey is not careful, will develop into a full-scale economic crisis with lots of li livelihoods being hurt. The president, central banker, the Treasury, they don't seem to care. I mean, in the sense of there seems to be some other as and yet unknown policy that's being pursued here. Yeah, and it's a puzzle to people because not only is the economics clear on this, but the evidence on the ground is pretty convincing. This currency has lost half its value. That means higher inflation. That means purchasing power of the Turkish people is being eroded. And in addition to that, we are seeing disorderly volatility. Today alone, Richard, today alone, the currency traded in a 10% band. That is enormous, and that in itself causes damage. So it, people are scratching their heads as to what will it take um, until Turkey realizes that it needs to stabilize its foreign exchange markets. I need to talk about the more orthodox central banks. Uh, uh, you know, the Bank of England raised rates a smidgen against the Omicron variant. The markets are absolutely... The US markets are having uh, been buoyant, are now going through a tear. What's going on in the US markets? So, a lot is going on in the US market. Um, and there are different interpretations. I'll give you my interpretation. The US market is realizing that inflation is going to be higher and more persistent than many expected, including the Fed. Mm -hmm. The US market, in my opinion, is worrying that the Fed is about to make a policy mistake by going too slowly initially in easing its foot off the monetary accelerator and then having to slam on the brakes next year. So they're starting to worry about not just high inflation but also growth in the future. Now you see that very clearly in the bond market and you're starting to see it in the currency market, in the stock market. Do you believe that Jay Powell's, I mean, I listened to his statement, I listened to the press conference. He, he's basically saying, you know, we think there is time on our side. Do you think there is time on their side? No. You know, I've been arguing for a long time that inflation is not transitory. Um, Chair Powell finally retired that word um, a few weeks ago. It took way too long. And in the meantime, we lost that huge window where they could have started taking action without hurting the economy. Now, that window still exists, Richard, but it's very narrow. And I don't think they're going fast enough. And I worry that that window is going to close on them. Um, just think of what we just heard on Omicron. That also has an impact. So they should have moved earlier. Late is better than never, but they have to move faster now because they are so late. Do you think that there is something very nasty waiting to happen in the markets? Um, I hope not, but there is something potentially nasty that could happen to the economy and therefore can happen right. to the market. And it's a word that you don't like hearing called stagflation. Ah! Growth comes down and inflation goes up. I that was... That... I was talking about stagflation with you six months ago. We've got it in the UK. Correct. Nobody wants to admit it, Mohamed. But look at the UK. The Bank of England says inflation will be 
Growth is virtually zero by uh, in, in Q4. Even if you get 1% of growth, a half a percent, de facto, you've got stagflation. Right. And why is it that no one wants to admit it? For two reasons. One is we don't have good policies to deal no. with stagflation. And two is the marketplace hates stagflation because you get hit on both sides. Um, so people don't like talking about it. I view it as a risk, not the baseline. I have to stress it's a risk, but it's a risk that's growing in importance. Yeah, but it's the same sort of risk that deflation was after the great financial crisis. It's sort of the spectre hovered around and it hovered around with sufficient force that it did impact economic activity. And we are seeing behaviors change. It will be a tragedy, Richard, if we repeat the mistake coming out of the global financial crisis, which is we win the war. The war then was against the global depression. The war today is against COVID. But we end up of not establishing the peace of high, inclusive, and sustainable growth. And I worry that if we're not careful, once again, we will win the war, but fail to establish the peace. And then, and then we lose more resilience for the future. So this is a critical time policy-wise.